What's up Convoy? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be basically about Volvo versus Kenworth and my personal experiences uh, since I stopped driving. For those of you who don't know, I stopped driving truck uh, a few years ago and I started fixing trucks. So I'm still in the industry but uh, doing things a little bit different. Uh, just a little backstory for those who haven't seen the, the recent videos. I stopped driving because I was with a temp company, the last official driving job that I had, and I uh, went to this temp company, and they placed me with this male contractor in Detroit, and uh, while I was getting uh, my, my truck checked out by one of the mechanics that this temp company had placed me with, I started talking to one of the mechanics there, and they were looking for a tech, and uh, even though I told them I never worked on trucks before, only cars. He basically said that uh, they're looking for anybody who could hold a wrench. So I talked to the owner, things worked out, and I started working as a mechanic, which I'll get into a, little, uh, a bit of this later in the video. I, uh, I drove, kind of, and I fixed trucks. So this, this company was a mail contractor in Detroit, and uh, my, my, my official position was a mechanic. And uh, this, this company had about a uh, hundred trucks. Mainly they were Volvo trucks. And they had several different variations, which if you know Volvos, they don't have a whole lot of variation. They have basically two major motors they run which is the D13 and the D12. The D12 is like the old school, kind of dependable. I know a lot of you, you drivers out there who are watching this video are pretty familiar with the, uh, the N14 Cummins motor. The D12 is the Volvo equivalent to that motor, which is the dependable. They never broke down. They, they went for 2 million miles, and uh, they had several of those trucks, but predominantly they had... Uh, the Volvo D13 engines. So I got really familiar uh, with, with the Volvo D13, D12, and they had uh, several D11 engines even, which is kind of rare, but not super unusual. The D11 and the D13 were kind of the same, just kind of mixed up a little differently. But uh, if, if, you're a, if you're a Volvo diesel mechanic, uh, you, you would know what I'm talking about. But... Uh, I remember I got hired in, and the, the 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 most common problem that I saw with these trucks were emissions related. You know the DPF, the SCR, stuff like that. And uh, my I tell you a little story. My my very first uh, emissions related problem was such an amazing teacher for me. Uh, this truck in particular, I'll never forget the truck number. The truck number was five seventeen. And uh, another tech I was working with, he was kind of showing me the ropes and stuff. Uh, he showed me how to use the, the Volvo diagnostic system on a laptop. And this truck wouldn't regen. It would, it would go into a regen. It would start regening. But if, if you just let it rip, it would last for until it ran out of fuel. And it would never complete a regen. And I remember the temperatures wouldn't get high enough. So then it was kind of like my responsibility to figure out what's going on. Now, they hired me as a mechanic. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. But I had told them I've never worked on a truck before. I didn't even know at the time I got hired in. I knew there was emissions because I drove truck and I heard about the emission system and stuff. And I knew it existed. I had to put DEF in my truck and all that. But uh, I didn't know there was a difference between the engine side and the SCR side. So this was all just like a super crash course for me. And, and thankfully for me, the owners of this company at the mail contractor, they, uh, they understood that and they worked with me. And, you know, I learned a ton at this first place I rented as a mechanic on big trucks. But this truck in particular, 517, wouldn't get hot enough. So um, initially, if you're just kind of a, a fleet mechanic, you just wing parts at stuff and... This guy had told me, he goes, hey, most likely it's a 7th injector, which 
most big trucks are are six cylinders so you hear six. i remember the first time i heard seventh injector i thought the guy was kind of screwing me a little bit but that exists uh the newer trucks nowadays don't have it it's all uh, i'll explain it in a minute but uh basically a seventh injector is a uh is past the turbo in the exhaust system that that injects diesel fuel to make the uh the whole emission system hotter so it could burn all the soot and stuff out of the diesel particulate filter so i'm i'm kind of like getting the hang of this stuff and uh we replaced that and that's a few hundred bucks and uh didn't fix it so now it's basically like my responsibility to fix this truck. Why isn't it getting hot enough? Now this thing's got to get to about a thousand degrees to start really burning the soot out of the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. And um, that seventh injector didn't fix it. So me being brand new, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, uh, I just start winging parts at it. You know, I remember I put like injectors in it and then I put a turbo on it and all, all the um, AHI module and all this other stuff that is associated with this system. And it got to the point, I don't even know how much money. We're talking buco bucks here. You know, you start talking about big trucks, you're talking about big bucks. And uh, I probably wing thirty to forty thousand dollars between between all the, the parts and the labor and it's still not fixed. So finally the owners say, okay, we'll, we'll tow it down to the dealership and the dealership that this particular company bought trucks from was uh, was in Ohio. So I don't even know what the tow bill was. Now that we use the specific tow company for everything and uh, they gave us a deal, but still from Detroit, Michigan down to Ohio, probably $1,500, $2,000 just to get the truck down there. And I had went through everything that, that I was aware of at this time. And uh, I remember just the, the dealership calling me, talking to me. They uh, they basically went through process of elimination of what I had replaced. And they were like, well, pretty much the only thing left that you didn't replace was a $75 valve that hangs on the back of the air dryer. And uh, we're going to do that. So I'm like, okay, they do that and it fixes the problem. But, uh, so that was kind of embarrassing. But at the same time, it was like, you know, I'm learning. I, ne I had never worked on this stuff before. And uh, that, that was a great lesson. That truck, 517 at this mill contractor. They still have this truck. I, I, was, I was over there three or four weeks ago talking to the mechanics there. And uh, this truck is still with them and uh, still running. But I, I owe so much credit to this truck because I feel like, that truck in particular was so much more valuable to me in my experience and, and my pathway to where I'm at now than than even like a legitimate school would be because that was actual hands-on training and you learn a lot of this stuff through failure and uh, yeah through not fixing stuff you know winging parts at trucks is never good you know that's what I've learned pretty much my whole life but when I was trucking it was different but I fixed cars I went to driving trucks now I'm fixing trucks even when I was working on cars you're not just supposed to like throw parts at a car it's not how you fix them you're supposed to properly diagnose them and stuff but I had no idea what any of these components were when I first started fixing trucks but that was so valuable to me, that truck, because I learned so much off of that, literally that one single truck that, uh, yeah, that place, and they weren't mad at me. I didn't get in trouble. They, they understood. You know, they knew I was new. They knew whatever. But I consider that my crash course into the truck repair industry. So most of these trucks now, all right, I'm talking about Volvos, but now I'm at a Kenworth dealer. I'm at the level, I'm a certified mechanic at the uh, at a dealer level. And uh, most of the problems I see with these Kenworths that come in, check engine lights and D-rates. And you guys that drive out there, you know what I'm talking about, being in D-rate. That sucks. You can only go five miles an hour. All those problems are, are from the emission systems. Now, don't get me wrong. I see my, my fair share of 
uh, big problems. Like for instance, uh, one, of, one of my closest friends, I worked there with him and uh, at the Kenworth dealer. And we had a truck, a W900 actually. A Kenworth W900 with an X15 motor, Cummins engine, uh, had come in and he had a tail light problem. One of his taillights wasn't working or whatever it was. I don't know the whole exact story because it wasn't my job, but it came in because one of the taillights wasn't working and he ended up getting it in frame. We're talking $30,000 tab here. And uh, all he did, he was fixing the, the taillight and he had noticed that the uh, water fuel separator was, was full of coolant. Ended up needing a complete in frame. But... Uh, I digress a little bit. I'm going back to my my first wrenching job. Uh, I had learned a ton there, and I thought after a while, after several months of being there and learning about Volvos, and being that we had so many of those same trucks, and I was learning so much on that particular truck that that's what I was going to do. I was going to work on Volvos, even if I had left that company. It was going to be there with a, a a company that had a fleet. Uh, Volvos or a Volvo dealership or that's what I really got to know was Volvos. I used to know all the trouble codes and mo not all of them but most of the trouble codes and the common problems. I used to have drivers call me and they say you know whatever their problem was and I said like, okay I, won't, I don't even have to see the truck I'll just order the part it'll come in I'll fix your issue. So after doing that for a couple of years uh, I had my friend that I work with now at the Kenworth dealership, he had contacted me. He had realized that I now worked uh, in the repair side of the trucking industry and I don't drive anymore. He said, hey, you want to come to the Kenworth dealership? He goes, we're looking for techs. And uh, I said, no. I was like, I, I know Volvo and I'm familiar with Volvo. I don't know anything about Cummins or Packard or Caterpillar or Kenworth in general, or any Packard product. So I declined the offer. And uh, I, I, for those of you that saw my last video, or my recent videos, you would know that I really liked the mail contractor job, but I was getting kind of tired of the hours because I was supposed to work from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m., but that never happened. I would always go in early and leave late and just out of necessity, not because I wanted to, just because uh, that job, the mail contractor, I would uh, I would also have to drive at times quite often, actually, because a driver would call off, and I just got so sick of hearing the excuses from drivers. You know, it was something where, and if you work for a mail contractor, you would know, but it's the mail, it's the, the U.S. mail, the U.S. Postal Service, where everything's supposed to be on time, delivered, and, and there's it's it's so strict with their times. To where a driver would call off, he would, they would call us up with whatever excuse they had, whether it was a flat tire, or their kid's sick, or I mean, whatever. I heard the most ridiculous stuff. And uh, I would have to go do the load for them. And most of the time, it was a local thing where it would, I would have to work, you know, till say 10 a.m., get in a truck, do a local stuff just around the Detroit area. But it wasn't unusual. I would have to go to, say, Pittsburgh or Indianapolis for one of the longer runs we had. And that was the, the longest runs we had was either Pittsburgh or Indianapolis out of Detroit. So I was getting kind of sick of the drivers, too, because I felt like they knew the system. They knew how it worked. They could call off without fear of losing their job for two reasons because drivers now are, are needed and they knew they wouldn't get fired and B they knew that one of the mechanics would cover their load so I, I, I basically got sick of that and between the hours and driving so much and stuff and I was still burned out from from my driving days I didn't want to drive anymore so I uh, I found another company in Detroit that hauled auto parts for their biggest customer was like uh, Chrysler, but they did GM and they did all their general freight and stuff. And they also had a, f a fleet of Volvos. They had about 150 trucks. So I went there and I was there about nine months. And uh, 
I was getting like super familiar with Volvos, like the uh, the engine systems and emissions and stuff, and that was like their big thing. And I had remembered that uh, I knew what the hell I was doing with Volvos just from working from that male contractor. And I got there, and their, their big focus, their big push was like preventative maintenance. They want to do oil changes and tires and whatever general maintenance to the trucks. But I had said in the interview to the guy who interviewed me, he was like, hey, you know, I could do like, you know, engine work and trans work and, you know, electrical stuff with Volvos. And he was like, cool, we need that. So I worked there and uh, I started getting into some bigger jobs. But then like I would get a truck that needed whatever it needed. You know, the most common thing, you guys know who drive Volvos out there, who like Volvos. You know that, especially the D13s, uh, injectors and cups were a big deal. It was a common problem with Volvos. So we'd get a lot of trucks. The instant a driver would tell me that their their truck runs great and it runs good and everything, but in the morning when they would get up from a 10-hour break and they'd go to start the truck and it would be an extended cranking time, I can almost tell you with like a 95% certainty this needed cups and injectors injector cups and fuel injectors so I would order the stuff or tell the manager there that this is what it needs and then they would kind of like frown upon it or I would get some kind of feedback uh, negative feedback from them where they're like oh we'll send this to the dealer we got like you know 15 p.m.s lined up that need to be done now I'm like I don't give a shit about the p.m.s I could save this company so much more money doing these bigger jobs. You guys need to send out this PM stuff. You know, these PMs are not that expensive if you go somewhere else, but you know, these bigger jobs, you send them to the dealership, they cost a ton of money. And uh, they just weren't jiving with that. So then my, my, my friend working at the Kenworth dealership, he had contacted me again. He's like, dude, we need techs so bad because in the trucking industry, if you drive out there or you're thinking about driving or you know anything about the driving part of it, you know that there's a huge shortage of drivers. Now, because there's less techs and it's not like the driving force of the industry, I feel like most people, even within industry, don't know, but there's a huge shortage of, of people who can work on these things, uh, trucks. So... He says, uh, dude, just, just come talk to the service manager over here at this dealership. He goes, you know me. I'm not lying to you. I'm a reliable source, you know. So I'm like, okay. So one day I finally make it over to the Kenworth dealership. I talk to the service manager. Things are great. He gives me a tour. I talk to my friend. I actually get to physically see the shop. And um, I kind of like it. Even though I have no experience at all with Kenworths. You know, I've never put hands on a Cummins motor, I've never put hands on a cat motor, Packer motor, even a Kenworth. We had, at the, the, the company I was with at the time, they had four or five Kenworth trucks. <clears throat> and uh, when we had a problem with one of those, I wasn't willing to even work on one of those. We would send it to the dealer that I'm working at now, which ironically enough, at this very time I'm making this video, we have one of the trucks, the Kenworth trucks that I used to, uh, that belonged to the company that I used to work for. But anyways, so I'm like, okay, I, I, I tell the service manager over at uh, Kenworth, I know Volvos, that's my thing. I know, I know pretty much, not everything, because if there's a tech out there that says I know everything about a certain truck or whatever, they're lying. There's so much engineering and stuff. No tech knows everything about every truck or any truck in particular. But uh, I tell them, dude, I never put hands on a, on, a, on a Kenworth before. I know Volvo. That's my thing. And this guy tells me basically, well, they're different, but the same thing. So we're interested in it. We want you to come over here. So we negotiate a little bit. And he meets what I want. And I know also, in the long run, because, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty young guy. I'm only 33 years old. 
And I know in the long run, plus the, I know that I know where the industry is headed uh, as far as like people not getting into this, you know, the, the new generation not not filling in the old generation spots that are retiring. I'm like, OK, my biggest thing to doing what I'm doing now with Kenworth was I know Volvo, I got Volvo unlocked pretty much. I can go I can go to work to the to to a Volvo dealership and make more money than I'm making now. But uh I want the knowledge. So we talk and I I ended up agreeing to make at the, where I'm at now more money than I was. So I'm like okay I'm happy but I also tell him like I want the training. I want you know I want as much knowledge as possible and he goes fine. Which is awesome because uh, next month I'm actually going up to Wisconsin uh, for a, uh, a training course through Packard, which owns Volvo, uh, not Volvo, Kenworth. And uh, this is what I'm seeking because I know in, in, the, in the long game, many years from now, uh, you know, Volvo is not going to stop making the D13 engine. And I know the engine pretty well. And I know... They got the iShift as their automatic and Eaton's as their manual transmissions primarily. I know that stuff pretty good. And uh, I'm like, okay, I have that base knowledge at minimum. Even in the future, if, I, if several years things change a little bit, I still have a good base knowledge of, of these Volvo trucks. But I want to know Kenworth now. You know, that, that, that was my, my, my driving force to make this change. So I go to Kenworth, and I've been there over three months now, and I'm learning so much. I've done, like, uh, computer-based training and stuff, and, you know, I have a friend that works there. I grew up with this guy, and uh, I have a problem that I've never faced before. I could always turn to him or any other techs I work with now who have more experience than me with, with these Kenworths, and they show me stuff, and there's a lot of, there is a lot of stuff that applies from from the Volvos to Kenworth now, and it's great, you know. And uh, if you have a basic knowledge of m trucks and have a mechanical ability, you can work on pretty much anything. And I know there's owner operators out there that are drivers. Obviously, they own the truck, they drive the truck, and uh, they fix their own stuff. They figure it out as they go, and. A lot, of the, a lot of what I've been doing at this dealership has been that. Figure out as I go, but having this base of knowledge from working on Volvos. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that in the future this stuff pays off because I'm gaining my experience now with Kenworth. And there's so much more variation with, with Kenworth because, like I said, with, with Volvo, you had basically three engines. One of them, uh, this is the primary engine, which is the D13. That's their their show pony. But with with Kenworth, they have different variations. You have two main motors. You have the Cummins motor, which there's different variants of the Cummins motor, and you have the uh, the Packard motor, which there's different variants of the Packard motor. But then you also got Caterpillar motors in there, which I'm learning on, and it's just been a great experience. You know, a great learning experience for me. To make this shift, I'm I'm so glad that I have stopped being so closed-minded about working on just one product and learning about different things. And that was my when I decided to make that switch. That was my my main motivator. So so I mean I don't know I know I know a lot of truck drivers out there watch these videos. And if you have either have a Volvo or Kenworth. And you have a question about it, don't hesitate to ask. Which, by the way, by the way, I know across the industry as a driver, anywhere you go, it could be in real life in a truck stop, it could be anywhere on the internet. Definitely on the internet, it's so much more visible. But everybody says that if you drive a Volvo, you're kind of a sissy driving a Volvo. But I got to tell you, from being, going from, starting with Volvo and where I'm at with Kenworth, and I see some of those badass trucks that you guys love to tout uh, about being a real man's truck, you know, a W900, uh, the 880, or, you know, the, like the sweet trucks that, that look great and the kind of the old classics, and 
even the new stuff. You guys just see a Kenworth and you guys think it's like so much better than a Volvo. Believe me, working at, at a Kenworth dealership, they got a lot of the same problems. A lot of the same problems. Like I said, mainly it's emissions issues, but I've also seen, you know, the the big failures too. Transmissions and engines, which isn't Kenworth or Packard necessarily, but I've seen a lot of the Kenworth stuff fail too on the, on, the, on that side of it. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, IP and chassis harnesses and whatever the, the the Packard Kenworth stuff in particular. So if you're watching this, if you've made it this far. I want you guys to know that just because you drive one particular truck over another and I, I Freightliner gets it too. You know, I don't know about Freightliner so much. I've never put hands on a Freightliner, but I know they fail too. I've driven a lot of Freightliners and they all pretty much have the same problems. Put it this way. If you're driving whatever truck and you think you're so much better than say a Volvo or Freightliner, International, Kenworth, Peterbilt, whatever it is. If you don't think that you can drop whatever trailer you're pulling and that one of those trucks that you think is a sissy truck can't hook up to it, you're very wrong. I promise you that 100%. So I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to uh, finish my night off with a couple of beers. And I hope those of you out there that are of age, able, and have something to drink can join me after this. Uh, I hope you do. But... Uh, I'm going to have a couple of drinks and uh, hit, the, hit the sack. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, like I said, if you guys either have a Volvo or a Packard, it could be a Peterbilt or Kenworth because they're basically the same truck. And you either have a, a Caterpillar, Cummins, or a uh, Packard motor. If you have a question for me, leave it down in the comments. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. So... Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed, if you're learning something, or if you have further questions. But either way, I'm going to get back to my beer. So hope you guys enjoyed. Run hard. Get paid.